In a recent video, we explored the world of free games, but that was just the tip of the iceberg. And today, I want to delve even deeper. Ring of Elysium is arguably one of the best looking free games in the world, with no more than 400 average players. But only four years ago, its player count looked like this, so what went wrong? Well, Ring of Elysium was released on the back of the initial Fortnite hype, almost exactly a year after Fortnite went free. At the start, it appealed to thousands and was essentially the realistic version of Fortnite given H1Z1 was long dead and PUBG was slowly dying off. Much like PUBG, it had third and first person, but with some special abilities. I tried playing the third person mode, but it didn't go great. I'm actually stuck. I'm, I'm just stuck. So, yeah, I stuck to first person since that's more familiar to me and seems to be more popular nowadays. These different modes obviously cause a bit of separation in the player base though, and for a dead game, you kind of wonder why they haven't just been removed. Sadly, the last update to Ring of Elysium was almost a year ago, and that's not counting the one server maintenance in between, so I really wouldn't expect any changes in the near future. Thankfully, the game is pretty much finished, and I still believe it's one of the best Battle Royale games available. Apart from the combat maybe, which felt more like a shitty mobile game you downloaded from one of those clickbait Twitter ads. However, in its heyday, Ring of Elysium was competing with the likes of PUBG, and definitely had the the potential to stump out all the other battle royale games, but with the lack of updates, cheaters and developers taking out popular maps that literally everyone in the community loved, it seemed to fall just short and slowly died out. Yeah, safe zones just appears, right? So you see that on the map here, right next to us, this yep. is a safe zone. So in two minutes, whoever has yep. the most oxygen goes to that spot and it's a five minute counter. And if anyone comes into the zone, with more oxygen, they become the king. And whoever's the king is marked on the mini-map. Contrary to a lot of beliefs, I didn't run into any cheaters when I was playing. In fact, it was kind of the opposite. Oh, fuck me. Oh, what the fuck? And then on my third game, I met some other people and they were something. Hello? Hello? That's the moment up! That's the moment up! Hello, Falkers! Hello, we come to my home town in the other Oslo. And I'm going to ring of Iceland with my baby on the other way. And I'm going to go to the ring. Are you sleeping with your mother? Gold boy 1, gold boy 12. No, I'm just sleeping. Bro, I can hear it through his mic. We didn't win, not once, and in my last game, me and this other guy were about to win, and then my graphics card decided to overheat because I didn't realize I still had MSI Afterburner open. So, now that this game is pretty much officially dead, what were the features that people actually wanted? Well, a lot of it boiled down to one thing that almost everybody in the community wanted, and that's the snow map. If you take just two seconds to look at the reviews on Steam, you'll see that's by far the most consistent complaint. And it seems like that snow map, which everybody wants, will likely never be added ever again. Where are you guys from? Are you a fuck? Are you a fucking <laughs> Hey, yo! We're from okay. Norway. Older games are the most fascinating things on Steam, and for me, OpenTTD, first released in 2004, ticks absolutely every box. It's a top-down business simulation game where you're meant to build transport systems, docks, railways and tunnels to essentially connect cities and factories together. The better you connect these locations, the faster you can build an entire self-sustaining country or city. OpenTTD is an expansion of an even earlier Transport Tycoon by Chris Sawyer. The original Transport Tycoon game was released in 1994, and this newer OpenTTD game was a fan-made recreation with the goal of reverse engineering the original game engine. By 2006, this newer iteration of the game was very polished. Multiplayer was even introduced and then later in 2010, an entire graphics overhaul. I spent over an hour trying to figure this game out, but my TikTok brain must be too degraded and eventually I had to give up. 
but I did manage to figure out how to build some roads, and if I just stuck with it, I could have committed some pretty enjoyable war crimes. But by the end, I had to take out another loan, and like most college students, I was almost $300,000 in debt, with just some roads and bridges to show for it. The whole concept of this game though is great, and the community is still active almost 20 years later. But since I'm shit at the game, watching other people is the only real way to experience it, and it's genuinely crazy seeing the things other people can build. To me, that's a testament to how good this game really is. It's like a prehistoric city skylines, but the progress is more organic and you influence it instead of actually building everything. Not to mention it doesn't have hundreds of dollars worth of DLCs. But this isn't the only fan made recreation I want to explore today, because the Stalker franchise has its very own community made mod that you've probably heard of. This is Stalker Anomaly, a fan made mod of the original Stalker Call of Pripyat. Anomaly was made with the goal of enhancing and expanding upon the original game, and since its release in 2018, it's become one of the best mods in the world. I've never actually played a stalker game before today, and that was kind of obvious. When I wasn't shooting people in the starter village, I was trying to do quests with this guy. Thankfully, I didn't even get far enough to the point where I could really spoil your experience, because when killing some of the infected boars, either I would die, or that Sylvester Stallone fellow word so it was hopeless. But when you're playing this mod you genuinely don't realise that you're actually playing a game that originally came out in 2009. Now don't get me wrong, this still doesn't look like GTA 6, but it's a huge improvement, and the strong community it's garnered is proof that the mod has done an insanely good job. Now we all know, itch.io is the home to some of the strangest and most hidden free games in the world, so I took a look around. At first I found this fishing game but it literally ran on 2fps and I couldn't even full screen it, so I decided to move on to a horror game. Essentially I had to walk around this dark level using a mop to clean up wine off the floor, and after that the game decided it had enough and I had won. So maybe checking out itch.io games wasn't the right move, but what about the popular ones? Well, the first one I saw was The Backrooms. You've probably heard of it, and until now I hadn't played a single Backrooms game. So I spent a solid 15 minutes waiting for jump scares, walking around and finding keys and also trying to find my way out. And I did get pretty far, and then... <sighs> okay. I mean, there was no need for that. So I deleted that downright dreadful manifestation of shit from my PC and returned to Steam, where I downloaded a game called Disease Z Zombie City, which was arguably a bigger mistake. If you've ever played survival games, you'll know a name like this is the biggest red flag you can possibly see. The game itself wasn't yet released, so there were no reviews, and I couldn't find any discussion of this game anywhere on the internet. But the demo was available, so I jumped in, and quickly realized this game was as infant as I thought it was. The game itself isn't bad, but it's just not good. At all. After all, it's a demo, so the only way is up. Surely. There really wasn't much to do, except run around and shoot things, so that's what I did. Except some things just don't die. The shooting itself was actually pretty smooth, and at first glance, like most survival games, the world looks beautifully stunning, until you look just a little bit closer. At which point you realise why you're running on 20 FPS on the lowest graphic setting. The game has decided to render each and every skyscraper, and I'm assuming the insides of every skyscraper, no matter how far away they actually are, and that also includes any debris, trees, and bushes, and probably anything else you can think of. So if it wasn't already mining Bitcoin, my GPU is definitely now fried. 
And not that it really matters, but these assets, the post-apocalyptic cars, the vines, and gas stations, can whoever designed these please make some new versions? Because it's almost getting as bad as that ambulance that every fucking survival game in existence has for some reason. However, I will give the developer of this game credit. It's clearly a very small team, if not just one person, working on their own little passion project that does look pretty good. So once it's finished, maybe we'll return and who knows, maybe it'll surprise us. We have two more games to explore, and they might honestly be the best. This is Prop and Seek. As the name kind of entails, it's hide and seek, but the hiders disguise as props, and every so often the hiders are forced to change their prop while still being hunted, which leads to some interesting moments. Look at him checking the chairs. He didn't even look. I wonder if he's gonna hit the wheelbarrow. <laughs> Oh fuck, it's gonna change. Boom! That's so good! Alright, what's going on? Uh, he's right over there. Oh, he's coming back. Oh shit. I can't get out of this menu. It's gonna change what? Prop and Seek was first released in 2020 by Twerk Games. The servers are often dead, but when I joined one with four players, it seemed that within 20 minutes, the lobby had filled up to over 20 people somehow. Holy shit, why are there so many people on now? 20 seconds. <laughs> He's a fucking tree. As a hunter, your goal is to obviously just run around, hitting things, waiting until whatever inanimate object you hit moves, and then you chase it while the table in front of you just runs for its life. As a hider, you have to blend in, and since not many people know the maps that well, it was pretty easy. Until the game got to the point where all the hiders have to change their prop, Okay. Oh, but you don't kill him. He's not even lined up. This wheel that pops up, by the way, is random and you don't really have a choice as to what you turn into. You can unlock more slides off the wheel though and for some degenerate reason, I did pay $20 for that extra one slot. Obviously, this game is a carbon copy of Prop Hunt, which originated from Gary's mod and then to hundreds of other games over the years. But honestly, they've done it very well and I'm surprised this game doesn't have more players since it was probably the best one I played so far. But I did want to try one more game, and this time, it's a more recent game. In 2022, Zombie Carnage 2 was released as a first-person shooter where you can play as both a zombie or more ordinarily, a human. When I played, I didn't see more than four people though, so the game is quickly dying off, but the players I did play with were actually so wholesome. They even later invited me to their group chat where they ping people to play the game all at once given there just aren't enough people to play with most of the time. Thankfully though, the game does have AI as without friends, it's almost impossible to make any real progress. I started off in this big royal room being chased around by zombies, but eventually the map changed and the game mode changed as well into something more similar to COD zombies. The zombies would come in waves, gradually getting harder with your gun changing now and again as well. This mode, for however long it lasted, was genuinely amazing, and getting 200 kills stroked my ego enough to forget about anything that happened in Stalker Anomaly, Ring of Elysium, or even Open TTD. Also, the movement in this game is literally like a breath of fresh air. There are quite literally no restrictions, and you can ADS with your gun while still running around, turning, and even jumping. But I wish they took more advantage of this by making maps with parkour or different elevations instead of these flat worlds with pretty much nothing to look at. However, as far as free games go, this is one of the best shooters I've played in ages. And with friends, it's fun. So I'll leave the link to the game's Discord in the description in case you want to check it out for yourself. As always, thank you so much for watching the whole video and remember to sub so you don't miss when I next upload. I will also join the Discord in the description below and, you know, maybe check out my Patreon. Yeah, you know, maybe follow my Twitter. You know, you know all, all the regular things.